Hello everyone. Welcome to this lecture about the theories on the origin of language. So this is uh, always a baffling question to answer. People always find it really confusing to answer this question. How did language originate? Okay, what was the beginning? Uh, what was it like in the beginning? Okay, so many uh, people who studied language, you know, because linguistics is the scientific study of language and uh, linguists, they have tried to figure it out, okay, what was the beginning and uh, many people like uh, we are only taking six theories about the origins of la origin of language and these theories talk about the origin of language, how language originated. The first one being Bow Wow theory. So Bow Wow theory, it is based on the assumption that language originated as a result of human instinct to emit natural sounds or onomatopoeic sounds, such as that of the cry of an animal or that of the wind blowing. So onomatopoeia, if you're familiar with figures of speech or poetic devices, then you might know that word onomatopoeia means the words that are formed out from imitating the natural sounds like the sound of a snake, his sound, or of sound so or cuckoo the sound of the cuckoo bird so all these are onomatopoeic sounds so that is one prominent theory talking about the origin of language because language might have originated from that aspect that the men and women they started imitating the natural sounds that that they were able to see around them and uh, they started imitating that so because imitation is also a part of like uh, that human behavior so and maybe that that was the origin of language so that the first theory is bow wow theory where the uh, assumption is that the sounds the language originated from those onomatopoeic words or the started with the imitation of natural sounds. And the noted 19th century linguist Max Muller said, the onomatopoeic theory goes very smoothly as long as it deals with cackling hens and quacking ducks. But round that farmyard rises a high wall and it is beyond that wall that language really begins. So this can be considered as a kind of a limitation or a drawback for Bauer theory where Max Muller rightly suggested that, okay, if you're talking about natural sounds, that there, there is a limit, okay, because we cannot think about much beyond or uh, we cannot actually discuss serious topics uh, just by limiting ourselves to the Bauer theory because it, talk, it just talks about the nat natural sounds. So beyond that wall of farmyard, uh, we have a long uh, world, we have a long way to go in, right? So we have to dig deep and to find out like really, okay, really how uh, language originated. So this can be considered as a limitation of Bow Wow theory. The second theory is Ding Dong theory, uh, which was advanced by German scholar and philologist Max Müller. And uh, according to him, that this theory uh, proposes the idea that language is originated in the sense of rhythm that is innate in man. The idea is that speech reflects some mystical resonance or harmony connected with things in the world. So uh, humans have that kind of like a sense of rhythm, ding dong. So that reflection or that kind of like something that is going from here and it will go around and it will reflect back or it will come back. So that idea, that sense of rhythm that humans have that innate aspect, maybe that is what uh, creates or that is what behind uh, the theory, ding dong theory. So that is the assumption based uh, on the idea of sense of rhythm that is innate in humans. Okay, so this has the connection to the impulse of savage war dance and the medieval ballads and sea shanties. So because uh, people's have, people have started uh, singing songs and they started imitating. So all these theories we can say is sort of interconnected uh, aspect is there because it all talk about uh, the rhythm or something, the imitation, the power of imitation that humans possess even from the beginning itself. So Ding Dong theory is about the sense of rhythm that is innate in humans. Maybe that's how language originated. And this theory was proposed by Max Muller. And the third theory we can say it is poo-poo theory from the, the term, the 
name of the theory might uh, seem like a fun. It seems interesting to the readers when they say poo poo theory. So the idea, the premise uh, behind this theory is that speech comes from the automatic vocal responses to pain, fear, surprise, or other emotions, a laugh, a shriek, or a gasp. But plenty of animals make these kind of sounds too. And they didn't end up with language. Again, there is a limitation. So for every each and every theory that we deal with, we can say there is a sort of limitation. But even then, that is how we advance, right? That is how we can study, we can analyze the uh, origin of language or for any subject in that case. So poo, poo theory is the idea behind this would be right when we are experiencing a sudden emotion, okay, suddenly we are shocked, we will kind of like utter a cry, we'll utter a kind of like a uh, something, some sound will produce, will be produced from our mouth, right? So uh, that maybe that is a surprise element is there. Maybe sometimes we are afraid. Suddenly we became shocked and surprised and suddenly we just shriek, we just scream. So that automatic vocal responses can be considered as the beginning of language. So that is one way in which we can say uh, language originated. And this has become known as Puputya since the expression poo poo as employed in the phrase to poo poo a scheme at first it's just an ex it was just an exclamation implying contempt or disgust through frequent usage it gained meaning so this was like when you say poo poo or like something that we are not really approving of okay so it's just something that we don't have to care about so that's kind of like disgust or contempt was there uh, and uh, from that emotion or something that we have to express our contempt attempt or discussed, uh, that expression came to be the name of the theory. So that's why we have this funny name for the theory, poo poo theory. Then the next one would be Yohi Ho theory, which is again something that we can uh, say might be a reliable theory or might be something that will make sense because we all know uh, when uh, humans started working, even from the civilization uh, times, uh, they started working that manual physical labor was there. So to ease with the labor, to ease with the hard work that they were uh, committed to, they uh, started singing, they start not Beyond singing, we can say it is a chant, right? Rhythmic chant, yo he ho, yo he ho, or grunts that people use to coordinate their physical actions when they work together. So as part of a teamwork, they started chanting rhythmic uh, songs or maybe some rhythms and um, uh, rhythmic chants. So maybe that's how speech started or maybe that's how language originated. Language began as rhythmic chants, perhaps ultimately from the grunts of heavy work, he ho. The linguist A.S. Diamond suggests that these were perhaps calls for assistance or cooperation accompanied by appropriate gestures. This may relate to yo he ho to the ding dong theory, such as, as in the word cut, break, crush, strike. So that's how all these theories are sort of interconnected because all these talk about the way in which humans started their lives. Okay, so the, especially with the civilization, they started working together, that sense of team spirit, the cooperation they had, and they had to kind of like invest themselves in sort of like physical labor, like real hard labor, manual labor. So they needed assistance or cooperation from the entire the community. So maybe that's how uh, it started. So that's the theory, Yoki Ho theory. And uh, then we have Lala theory or musical theory. Again, this has some sort of connection with Ding Dong theory, which talks about the sense of rhythm, remember? So this theory is also called Sing Song Theory. It proposes the idea that speech emerged from the sounds of inspired playfulness, love, poetic sensibility, and song. Danish linguist Otto Jesperson suggested that language comes out of play, laughter, cooing, courtship, emotional mutterings and the like. He even suggests that contrary to other theories, perhaps some of our first words were actually long and musical rather than the short grunts many assume we started with. So that's a clear disparity from other theories because all the most of the other theories talk about it started with maybe one sound, maybe like an utterance, maybe a, a short grunt. But here, Lala theory and musical theory suggested or sing song theory suggested suggest that uh, no, it might not be short grunts or like small utterances as we assume. It might be long and musical because you, if you think about the aspect, because babies they they just they start cooing right uh, because maybe the mother will start uh, 
singing some songs and because of that rhythm because of that sense of playfulness and that love that is associated with the song the baby will also start humming or making a sound so maybe that's how so that song aspect the musical quality or musical uh, behavior that we all have that is innate in human behavior even maybe we are not really good singers but we have that uh, sense to appreciate music that is innate in humans most of the humans will have that so uh, maybe that's how uh, speech originated or language originated and the last theory would be gesture theory which is considered as the most uh, important and uh, reliable theory because it states that human language was developed from gestures gestures uh, again it can be reliable right because always we have that sign language or gestures we use even with speech today we we are making use of gestures uh, to a greater extent. So maybe that's how uh, gestures along with that some utterances started and then it started like expanding that horizon. So maybe that's how language originated. So as opposed to the vocal signals that might have been adopted by non-human primates. This theory was advanced by William Wundt and later restated by Sir Richard Paget. Uh, the earliest method of communication was by sign and gesture made with hands, which was natural and spontaneous. Soon, every gesture of the hand was accompanied by a corresponding movement to the tongue. So maybe that's how, because it has got a scientific um, foundation, a base for this theory, because it is uh, something that we can actually rely on, because it started with gestures. And even today, for our everyday speech, we use signs, we use gestures, the, uh, along with the mouth movements we have that kind of like movements with hands right so maybe this uh, is one way in which language kind of originated so to recap all we learned about uh, six different theories talking about the origin of language we talk about bow wow theory imitation of natural sounds uh, then ding dong theory talks about the sense of rhythm uh, that will go and reflect back then uh, we talked about poo poo theory where it is about maybe like the sudden emotions can create or can kind of like um, make people utter a word at utter, utter a cry so that's poo poo theory and then we learned about lala theory where uh, it is about the musical theory, it is about the sing song, it is um, speech originated, might, it might be from songs. And then we learned about Yohiho theory, maybe speech originated from the um, utterances that called for the assistance or cooperation from the community. So from the manual labor, people started like chanting something. So maybe that's how, that's, that was Yohiho theory. And the final one is, um, gesture theory where we talked about language kind of originated from gestures movement uh, with hands maybe that's how language originated so these are the theories that are really popular talking about the origin of language so hope you all uh, understood uh, and maybe you had some fun learning about the origin theories especially with the names uh, okay so thank you all